what we have to look at for this particular video is the concept of sex chromosomes and also something known as sex linkage or sex linked inheritance now before we talk about sex uh, linkage and such what we have to cover is the chromosomes in the human body just drawing out a male and a female human over here and if we were to look at the body cell of the male and the female we know that the male inside the male body cell typically they will have 46 chromosomes as i am showing you right there and for the female also they will have 46 chromosomes as well now if you notice the chromosomes are numbered according to their sizes except the final two that i'm circling over there and i'll explain why that is so don't worry about that now the chromosomes that i'm highlighting the chromosomes that I'm highlighting, which is chromosome pair number 1 to number 22, which if you count it, meticulously count it, it comes up to about 44 chromosomes because each of them have a pair. So 22 pairs is 44. Uh, those chromosomes are all referred to as something known as autosomes. Now, do you have to know that in detail? Kind of. You just have to know what autosomes are. But the two chromosomes that are left, as you can see here, that are not highlighted, those two chromosomes are referred to as something called as the sex chromosomes so some students will ask me what's the difference between autosomes and sex chromosomes we will talk about that but for now i just want you to see that for the male they will have two sex chromosomes which are referred to as the x and y chromosomes and for the females they will have two x chromosomes x and x and typically just like any chromosomes they will have their own genes now, the interesting thing I want you to notice is for the female, the X chromosomes that they have are homologous, but for the male, it's not technically homologous because the X chromosome is larger than the Y chromosome. This is an extremely important point, and I'll elaborate on that further. But the point I'm just, I just want to mention over here right now is the reason why these chromosomes, XY or XX, are referred to as the sex chromosomes is because these chromosomes determine the biological sex of the person. That means XY chromosomes will affect the characteristics of the person to make them male and XX chromosomes will affect the characteristics of the person to make them female. That's what it's supposed to do. Now, in this case, for sex determination, just a quick one for this, we will just do a quick revision on O levels. The male will have XY chromosomes and the female will have XX chromosomes in their diploid cell. The males, when they produce gametes, 50% of the gametes will carry X chromosomes and 50% of the uh, gametes will carry Y chromosomes. And for the female, the egg cell will only carry one X chromosome. That's what it's supposed to do. And normally the offsprings, remember, the gametes, when they fuse with each other, they can get a 50% chance of getting an offspring, which is XX, and a 50% chance of getting an offspring, which is XY. So therefore, there's a 50% chance of getting a male or female offspring. So far, so good. Now, another very important thing I also want you to know is this. Even though I told you that the sex chromosomes will affect the biological sex of the person, that is true, the sex chromosomes also have genes that affect non-sexual characteristics. And I want you to know one example of that gene. Now, if you notice on the X chromosome over here, I'm just pointing out, putting out an arrow for that line, that gene is referred to as the factor 8 gene, which affects blood clotting. Blood clotting is not a male or female characteristic. It has nothing to do with sex. Yet, that gene is located on the X chromosome. The weird thing is, even though the gene is located on the X chromosome, it is not found on the Y chromosome because based on the size, the Y chromosome is quite small. That's a very interesting point. And I need you to know this for the purpose of the exam. And I'll explain why later. 
Now, another very important gene that the X chromosome contains, you don't need to memorize this for the exam, however, this gene is called the OPN1LW gene. No, you don't need to memorize this. I'm just reminding you, okay? Just letting, I'm just giving you an extra bit of information. This particular gene will actually affect the red green color vision in the person, and it's also located in the X chromosome. But is it found on the Y chromosome? No, it is not. So we are going to be talking about the next part, which is sex linkage, which means inheriting the genes located on the sex chromosomes. Now, as an example over here, when we are writing out the genotype and phenotypes when it comes to sex linkage, it's a little bit more complicated. Because, as an example, the factor 8 gene is located on the X chromosome. It has two possible alleles. So, I'm drawing out the chromosomes over here, the X chromosome. And that line which I'm putting as green in color represents the factor 8 gene. And the factor 8 gene has two versions, which is the capital H allele, which codes for a normal factor 8 protein, which allows the person to have normal blood clotting. Blood clotting just means that when you have an injury and you start bleeding, your the bleeding does not continue forever. Eventually, after a few minutes, depending on the size of the injury as well, the blood is supposed to clot and prevent the bleeding. So the faster the blood clot happens, it's good. So that's called normal blood clotting. But there is also a mutated form known as the small h allele, which is a recessive allele. And this one, however, it codes for an abnormal F8 protein. And therefore, it will make the person have blood clotting issues where the blood clotting is slower. And that condition is known as hemoglobin. Hemophilia. Now, to make life simple for us, how do we draw out the allele? The X chromosome, remember, this allele is located on the sex chromosome, which is the X chromosome to be specific, not the Y chromosome, by the way. It's only on the X chromosome. So how do we write it out? We just write it out as X and we just put a superscript or just a small capital H at the top over that. That's good enough. And this will allow the person to have normal blood clotting. And again, for the other allele, X small h will make the person have hemophilia. So how do we write out the genotype of the person then? Remember, if the person is female, in this case, they have two X chromosomes. And the X chromosomes will have two of the factor eight alleles. So they can have X capital H, X capital H. And in this case, the person will be female with normal blood clotting. They can be X small H, X small H. But in this case, they might have hemophilia or they're referred to as hemophiliacs. But they can also have X capital H, X small H. And because of the two X chromosomes, they are females. And because they have one capital H and one small H, which one is expressed? Remember, the dominant allele is expressed over the recessive allele, so the person will have normal blood clotting. But they are referred to as something called as carriers. Carriers meaning to say they can pass down the harmful allele to the next generation. So we'll exp I will show you how this works. But for human males, however, I told you they have only one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. And I told you as well that the Y chromosome does not have the factor 8 gene. Because it does not have the factor 8 gene over here, the males will only carry one allele. What does he mean by they only carry one allele? So the males can only be X capital H Y. Do Some students will say, teacher, why don't I put a Y capital H or Y small h? Because the H alleles, which are the factor 8 gene, they are not found on the Y chromosomes at all. The Y chromosome does not have that information. It is only found on the X chromosomes, no matter what. Okay, so they can only be X capital H Y, where the phenotype is male with normal blood clotting, or they can be X small h y, where they can be male and they have hemophilia. They cannot be carriers in this case because the males cannot be X capital H y small h because the Y chromosome does not carry the factor 8 alleles whatsoever. As an example over here, so let's take a phenotype. 
the male parent over here has normal blood clotting and the female parent over here is she has normal blood clotting but she's a carrier so in this case the male will have a genotype of x capital h y you have to include the sex chromosomes because it's a sex linked inheritance anytime it involves sex linked inheritance you have to include the sex chromosomes no matter what okay and for the females over here she will be x capital h x small h because carrier now remember just drawing out for the male X chromosome with a capital H allele within it and a Y chromosome replicates itself. Meiosis 1 separates the chromosomes. Yes, even though it's not homologous, it gets separated equally like this. And of course, meiosis 2 separates the sister chromatids. The males can produce 50% of the male gametes will have X capital H and 50% of the male gametes will have Y chromosomes. So that's how I just wrote it over there, as you can see it over there. So now, for the females, however, X capital H, X small H, how does it work? So as you can see, the X small H, I've put it as a purple color line. Meiosis 1 separates the homologous chromosomes. Meiosis 2 separates the sister chromatids. So 50% of the female gametes will carry X capital H and 50% of the gametes will be X small H. This is how we write it. So let's do a Punnett square. And when we do a Punnett square in this case, the male gametes at the top, female gametes, I'm putting it at the side. You can switch the places if you want to. Some students will ask me, can I put the female gametes at the top and the male gametes on the left? Up, entirely up to you. They are not so nitpicky with that, as long as you do it correctly. So when you cross them together, some of the offsprings will be X capital H, X capital H, which is female with normal blood clotting. X capital HY, which is male normal blood clotting, you have to include their biological sex as well. You have to mention whether they are going to be male or female because the sex chromosomes are also present. For the one at the bottom here, X capital H, X small h, female normal blood clotting because she has the X capital H allele, but she's a carrier. But here's the interesting thing. They may also get a male child and that child will have hemophilia. And that's the scary part right here. So interestingly, in sex-linked inheritance, the inheritance is not exactly equal when it comes to male and females. As you can see in this particular diagram here, there's a 50% chance of getting a male and 50% chance of getting a female. That is true, but out of the none of the female offsprings have the disease. They don't have the blood clotting disorder. But 50%, there's a 50% chance where their male child may have that blood clotting disorder, which is hemophilia. That is why sex-linked inheritance is a little bit more interesting than normal autosomal inheritance. I will explain autosomal inheritance in the next video. Don't worry about that. So when the genes are located in the sex chromosomes, they are not passed down equally amongst the male and females because the males can only carry one allele for the factor VIII gene, but the females can carry two alleles for the factor VIII gene. So this is quite interesting to note. Now, instead of talking about, you know, blood clotting disorders and sicknesses, let's try a slightly more, uh, you know, <laughs> a little bit more of a pleasant one. Now, this pleasant example over here that I want to show you is as follows, where this is an exam question. In some varieties of domestic cats, the gene for fur color is located on the X chromosome. The moment they mention this, we know that it is a sex-linked characteristic. That's your clue. The gene has two alleles. One allele codes for black fur and one allele codes for ginger fur. All right? And the two alleles are co-dominant where... A heterozygous cat will have fur with patches of black and ginger colors at the same time. The cat with two fur color is known as tortoise shell. So using appropriate symbols, that means, as you can see here, you are allowed to use your own symbols when it comes to the allele for the fur color. The X chromosome is fixed. You cannot change the X chromosome because it's mentioned already. But you can use any alphabets for the alleles. So I'm going to put X capital B for black fur and X capital G for ginger fur. Simple as that. Now, 
Using appropriate symbols, construct a genetic diagram to show the results between a female tortoise shell cat and a male ginger cat. Now, before we do that in detail, let's look at this cat. The cat sex chromosomes are almost similar to humans as well. XX is if XX female, XY male. So, for the cats, if the cat is X capital B, X capital B, the cat is female and black in color. If it's XG, XG, it's female and ginger. And if it's XB, XG, remember, the question said that it was co-dominant. So it will have patches of black. Ooh, looks cute. <laughs> Sorry, I can't resist it. So this is a cute cat. Uh, it is both black and uh, orange, uh, ginger at the same time. So in this case, this is referred to as tortoise shell inheritance. Okay, this is tortoise shell right here. But in the case of it being male, however, it is only X, B, Y. The Y chromosome does not have the gene. As I'm reminding you, the gene for fur color is only on the X chromosome. So the Y chromosome cannot have a large B or a small B at all. So in this case, it will be a male cat. It will be black. Or if it's X, G, Y, it will be male orange uh, ginger cat in this situation over here so the males cannot be tortoise shell at all as they can only carry one allele so let's try let's just kind of see how the inheritance works in this case so using appropriate symbols construct a genetic diagram to show the results between a female tortoise shell cat and a male ginger cat so, as an example over here, the female tortoise shell genotype is XBXG and the male one will be XGY. And remember, for the female, these are the chromosomes. I'm just putting it over there. Replicates. Meiosis splits it. So, it can produce 50% of X capital B gametes and 50% of X uh, capital G gametes. Very simple. Okay, so it splits equally. And for the male, it's the same as well. 50% of the gametes will have XG and 50% of the gametes will just have the Y chromosome. You just split it equally like this and that's fine. And when we do a cross, I'm not doing a Punnett square in this case over here. When we do a cross, the offspring's genotype, I'm listing it over here. These are the possible genotypes. And the phenotypes are tortoise shell female, black male, ginger female and ginger male. So these are the possibilities that can happen with the fur color inheritance in kitties. So I hope this gives you a better understanding of sex-linked inheritance in genetics.